see if we can get this well there we go see if we can get this position just right how's everybody doing tonight this is the like the third week of classes so we're doing okay at the college we got books at least for my classes we have books that's that's good and um, as far as weaving goes it's fun <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and um, start and if somebody comes on uh, later that don't be hesitant to ask questions even afterwards just post your questions in the comments and I'll start off with the introduction my name's Kathy McAnally and I am a hand weaver I have an eight shaft Jack Gilmore loom and uh, that enables me to do quite a number of things and lately I've been doing a lot of rugs um, you can uh, request uh, from my shop and my shop's name is R&R &R Woven Treasures and it's in on Etsy so the uh, address is R&R Woven Treasures dot Etsy -E dot com and uh, go in there and check out a lot of a lot of people have been ordering special sized rugs you know one of the things that you can't get from the store is your particular size in the color that you want so you know I can do that that's one of the nice things about weaving is you can do what you know ever kind of color you want just about and um, size is limited to the size of your loom my loom is 40 inches wide so I can't make a rug that's wider than 40 inches um, I make two styles of rugs one of them is a rep weave rug and I've talked to you about web rep, rep weave it's rep weave and um, uh, I've talked to you about web weave before and shown you an example and I'll post that uh, toward the top of the feed so you can see it tonight I'd like to talk to you about designing that's the first step that you really have to go through when you design it uh, when you have a rep weave rug and I'm going to uh, move the camera down um, so that you can see my graph paper and see the example of the rug that I've got out here for you I've got uh, a brown one that I finished earlier the one that uh, I'm working on right now to design is um, let me move the light just a little bit maybe even turn it off um, that's not good turn it back on sorry about that still getting used to uh, using the camera and doing all this on 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 uh, Facebook this is this is not how we did it when I started teaching 35 years ago <laughs> things have changed a little bit in that time period <laughs> but anyway this is a rug and you can see the motif that we've got here rep weave remember is a uh, a um, form of, of um, what I want to say warp uh, faced weaving in which only the yarn that goes in the vertical direction is the one that's showing and here you can see by using a fat or a really thick yarn here I can get that yellow to show more than the brown that shows up next so uh, in each of these blocks you have the two colors the yellow and the brown the yellow and the brown the yellow and the brown and uh, that's what creates the color that you see which is mostly the yellow and it creates this motif this design um, I started off this this piece on a piece of graph paper so let's look at my graph paper see if the graph paper shows up yeah the graph paper shows up pretty good okay um, down just a little bit okay here you can see I was playing up uh, turn it the right direction here I was playing with um, different ideas for a rug and the rug is going to be in black this black thread that I have here and a really nice uh, it's called light jade and another color that is a dark jade so this customer has ordered these three colors and I think they're going to be really nice together a light jade a dark jade and a black so I'm playing with the colors here and I've got a 30 inch rug each of the squares on this uh, graph paper represents two inches now 
the uh, rep weave is a block uh, weave design and we can have four different blocks. The reason why we can have four blocks is again because I have an eight shaft loom. And in every block you're going to have two of the shafts used. So let's just say that the first block is going to use shafts one and two. So on shaft one I'm going to have to put one color and on shaft two I'm going to have to put the other color. So each of these blocks can only hold two colors and each of these blocks um, and I can only have four blocks. Now, so in this design here, I have block, this would be block one, this would be two, this would be three, and the center here would be four, and then this one is just the same as this one, so that's symmetrical, so you're going to have this would be four, this would be three, this would be two, then this would be block one. So you can see that a symmetrical diagram um, really does nice a nice job. You can lengthen, I can make them wider, I can make them fatter, I can make them taller, and I, I kind of looked at making them taller here. But one of the problems I had with this diagram is that if each of these squares are two inches, this turns out to be a very large motif or a very large diagram, and you kind of got to watch your scale of um, of your diagram and so I kind of decided not to go with this so I didn't finish coloring it in because the scale was just not there it's extremely large so we ditched that idea the next idea I tried I was playing around with some colors and you can see in this diagram that each of the squares represents one inch now if each square represents one inch, you'll notice I now have four motifs or four designs across. Each still is a um, four block design. You still have the one, two, three, and four. Three, two, and one. So you still have the same thing. One of the things I was playing around here with is color. You can see here I was figuring out if I did it in black, how would it look? And if I did it in green, how would it look? One of the problems that this, um, this particular um, motif or this particular design that this customer has chosen, it, it really fits well with just two colors. The only way you can work in the third color is by putting the border on the side. So you got the border on the side here and you don't have a very large border. So I thought, you know, if she really likes all three colors, um, you're not going to have much of a border. I like to put the black on the ends because that kind of frames it up and would make it nice. So I was thinking that these with the green might be a little bit better. Let's look at the next one. Okay, this next one is probably the one that I'll go with, at least to some degree. The only problem with this is this very green rug. It has a nice large black border and here again each square. <coughs> Oh, excuse me, I've had a little bit of cold here. But each square represents one inch. So I have 30 basic inches across here. I have a little bit more because we have draw in that we have an effect. But anyway, um, so I've got the three motifs and I spaced them out a little bit. So I've only got three instead of four. Um, you can also see that here I've got one, two, three, four, or excuse me, I've got one, two, three, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four. So I, in other words, I repeated this. Up here, I've put letters instead of numbers. Instead of one, two, three, four, I put letters. So I've got a block E, F, G, H, G, F, E, E. Notice, see, this block is doubled. Um, and then I went on and repeated it across. Now you'll notice that this rug kind of has a very little black. It has a nice big wide black uh, border on each side. But what would it look like if it was a little bit more black? One of the things I was thinking about is this, this uh, double E right here. What if I had the darker green with black? Let's see how that would look. All I have to do is color the black as I'm doing here, over the dark green. I'll just color that in right quick. Okay, you can kind of get an idea of what that would look like. So you'd have 
a black um, square every once in a while throughout your rug. Now that might make it a little bit more balanced in all three colors, so I, I like that and I think I'm going to do that. Let me go ahead and color in the other side so we can see how the rug would look. Now that, that makes it a little bit better. Again, I've not violated any of the rules. On the side, you can see this nice large black line. Here, I've got another stripe, and it has one um, different thing, uh, one a different color. And the way I did this, and this is something unique with um, eight chef looms, uh, or with block weave, excuse me, with block weaves, you can take the colors and, uh, for example, if on this um, on this block here, if I put the dark and then the light and the dark and the light thread and threaded it that way, what if I flip that over and put the light and the dark? You'd have exactly the opposite of what you have on this row. So this one would be dark and these would be light and this would be dark and this would be light and this would be dark and this would be light and so on and so forth. So you can kind of come up with a different design, and I'm going to play with that over here on the border um, uh, to see what I can get. Um, it, it kind of kind of is is kind of a bit of a nightmare. Here is the row that I was looking at, doing the opposite over here. So it would be uh, column F, so it'd be block F, and I'd just flip it over, and we'd call that D. So anyway, this is a little bit about how rep weaves are done and how we uh, decide what color and our color balance, we get our motifs going. So if you can design a four block color pattern, I can weave it up. Just give me a call or contact me through my Etsy shop. Again, that's R&R &R Woven Treasures at Etsy.com. And... Um, you'll be surprised what a hand weaver can do. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we'll see you another evening.